Uh, posters they have an area of 180 square inches uh, with one inch margins at the bottom and sides okay and what dimensions will have the largest printed area okay all right so draw a picture um what do we got we've got frame And we've got to have the area has to equal that. Got one inch margins at the bottom. Okay. That's feet. And then um, two inch at the top. And in size. Okay. Okay. So it looks like that. And so um, once you do one of these, you can kind of like pick up on exactly what you need to do. Um, they're always kind of weird to set up at first, but if you just do one, uh, they they kind of let me move this out of the way here. They become kind of kind of simpler, you know. You can pick up on the pattern here. This uh, right here is going to be that would be the Y, but um, you got to get rid of those two margins there, so it would have to be Y minus three because you got two and one. Then this guy here would be x minus two. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So we know that the posters they have an area of this. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is the area, the printed area, is what we're going to actually. Uh, what does it say? It says. Um, Maximize, right? So the printed area is actually going to be length times width. So the length times width, and that actually is uh, x minus 2 times y minus 3. Okay, that's what we're trying to maximize, but we got two variables. So we're going to use this fact right here to um, remember we are, we are, I said minimize probably, um, we're maximizing the largest printed area. So let's go ahead and then use this information, that, to substitute one of those. It doesn't matter which one, but we just know that when we multiply them, their product has to be 180. So, um, I don't know, uh, let's just derive x. So let's go ahead and just solve for y. So y is going to equal 180 divided by x, and then now this y is going to change. So our new equation uh, will be now a function in terms of x. So x minus 2 times 180 over x minus 3. Okay. And now that that is a function, um, we're actually going, we're going to multiply this out. I think that's probably the best way. So we're going to call this p of x now. And when I multiply this times this, and the x's will cancel out. So I get 180. Then x times negative 3 is minus 3x. This will then become minus 2, um, nope, 3. Well, 2 180s is 360, so 360 over x um, plus 6. Okay, so now I got minus 3x minus 360 over x um, plus 186. Okay, so I've got it. Um, function in terms of x now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative. Because my max and min have to happen um, when the derivative is 0. So let's find that. That's negative 3. Then this will become a positive 360 over x squared. Okay, set that equal to 0, and now 3 goes over to the other side, and I get 360 over x squared. Okay, so now the x squared and the 3 will switch out. So 360 divided by 3, and that is 120. And taking the square root of 120, let's see, what is the square root of 120? 
Is that right? Uh, square root of 120. Okay. Okay, so square root of 120 is about 10.95. All right, and let's just verify that that is going to be a, um, a maximum. Okay, so 10.95. We got to put 10.95. I know you want to round up to 11, but I'm going to use 11 actually to determine if this is going to be positive or negative. Okay, so let's see. Um, negative 3 plus 360 divided by, um, let's use 11. Okay, 11 will be on this side though, okay? I guess I could have tested this, I could have just put it, plugged in a zero. In fact, if I put it, I can't put in a zero. If I put in a one, it would be um, positive. Increasing. And then if I were to put in an 11, it's negative, just barely negative. So that is negative, and there we go, that is a max. Okay, so we have verified that that is a maximum at uh, 10.95. And so with that then, all I gotta do is figure out what my Y coordinate is. So I know that this times the Y coordinate has to equal 180. So now I can just do that, 180 divided by 10.95 y equals 16.44. All right, and I do believe that is that's it. That's all you need it. All right. So moving forward, uh, let's do number nine, and then ten will be its own video. That will be the last one. The graph of the derivative is shown here. Okay. So what we're doing is we're sketching f of x. So this means that this f of x, there's plenty of, this is a sketch. So this thing could be anywhere as long as it's kind of up or down. It doesn't matter. Um, but the slope should be generally pretty close. Okay. All right. So try to get those slopes the same. But I just want you to know that if somebody wrote it up here, there's sketch up here. It's possible. And then if somebody wrote it down here, it's still good. Okay? All right. So this is the derivative. So we got to kind of think, um, and I know you guys want to, you might want to do this thing here, right? You know, you could. You could draw a little sketch thing. Um, but this is kind of, this is a basic one. This is like, I know that this is a constant slope, okay? If the slope is 2, that means that the original function had to have been a line because the derivative of 2x equals 2. So for it to be a constant, that means that this guy would have to be a line, okay? So um, I'm going to start this in pencil and then I'll commit to pen um, in a second. But all I need is a slope of, of 2. So 2 would be like this steep. So we're going to go start here. Okay, he has a slope of 2, then um, he is going to, now here his, his derivative is a line, excuse me, his derivative is a line, so that means then that his original function would have had to have been a quadratic, so expect a curve now. So um, at the curve, what's happening? Um, it looks like my derivative is negative. Oh, this is positive too, by the way. So that's why it's positive. Um, here, all of a sudden, it went negative. Okay. So at negative, this guy, and the derivative is open. So that means then that there's a sharp point. Okay. That there's no actual derivative at that point. So a sharp point, this guy is going to come down. Okay. And then his derivative is actually zero. So this means that 
he went he's switching okay right there his derivative is zero and at this point he is going to go up so he's gonna have a positive slope so it should go right up to roughly there okay then it goes back to a line again where it goes constant to okay so I don't know we can make him go right up to it and then two again okay all right so um let's see I'm trying to think of could this be any yeah um this could also kind of look like this this guy right here this little u piece could actually separately could have been lower this guy could have been up this guy could have been down these guys could have actually been anywhere they wanted now i made them connected okay but it didn't they didn't have to be connected i'm just used to that so let me just give you kind of another color here it could have looked like this it could have even been a hole there this guy could have been down here And then this guy could have been that is those guys should be both two though a slope of two um but yeah so plenty of variation here okay so for the test i'll just be looking for that okay like i like to just keep them connected because continuity appeals to me all right and we're at the 12 minute mark so we'll stop there make the last video for the last guy